What happens when the visual effects that you're creating go out of focus in a shot? There's a button for that somewhere, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, just just check this, you'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> check out this clip. You can see the glowing text does get blurry, but if you compare it with the practical part that was actually shot, it becomes clear that these two out of focus areas are very different. And I'm not trying to throw these visual effects under the bus, they did an amazing job with this movie. But it is an interesting case study to see what happens when you don't match up your CG camera with your real life camera. And that's a challenge I ran into on my recent short film, because I did have this visual effect shot where pretty much all of the visual effects were out of focus. And I had this really unusual lens that I was working with that makes the out of focus area pretty unique looking. That was again perfect but I wasn't focused, so reset. <laughs> so today, I'll be covering how you can match up Blender's camera with your real camera. And first, I'm going to start with some kind of general camera settings, but then we'll focus in on that blurry background, also known as bokeh, or bokeh. All right, so here in Blender, I have a quick test scene. You can see I've set up some trees here to match the footage. So we're going to start here by putting in a camera. Let's go Shift A and camera and R, X, 90. Let's just make sure that is facing forwards. I've got a view here for the camera and a view here for working with the camera. And the first thing we want to do is set up our camera so that it reflects our original camera that we shot with. And for me, I'm using a 58 millimeter lens, but that's going through a 0 0.71 times focal reducer. So I'm going to actually go in here and go times 0 0.71. And that'll give us the actual focal length of the lens that I used. So you're probably not going to be using this exact setup, but that's how you do it. Now, in addition to this, if we go under camera, we can set the sensor size, which is pretty important. For me, I'm using a micro four thirds camera. And once we set that, the field of view changes pretty dramatically here. I'm just going to reorient it by holding shift and tilde. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Anyways, that'll point the camera around and we can kind of center it on this plant here and the foreground. This will be kind of like our subject here. So first of all, if we just straight up render this, nothing's going to be out of focus. So what we have to do in the camera properties is go down to depth of field and we can check this. And another thing that's useful to have in the camera settings is limits and that will show where our focus point is. You can see there's a little crosshair thing here and a cool feature that I just discovered is you can actually grab this crosshair and put it wherever you want to focus. So I'm going to put it over top of this plant in the foreground and we already have some pretty nice settings to start with. If we take a look at the rendered view here, our background is starting to go out of focus and that's pretty cool. Now to match this clip, I'm just doing this very roughly, but we probably want to crank the f-stop way down. If we want to use the exact f-stop that we had on the day, it's probably going to be closer to a uh, f-stop of 2, but then you can see our background blurriness isn't matching. And what we could do to fix that is potentially grab the camera and bring it closer to our subject, and then grab the focus and bring it closer to the camera. And the closer that is to the camera, the blurrier the background gets. But I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And I'm just going to cheat it and turn my f-stop way, way, way down. Okay, so that's kind of reasonably close to what we had. The first thing I'll demonstrate to you is how to do kind of a hack to get the nice swirly bokeh of the Helios 44-2. And to do that, this is something I learned from a guy on YouTube named Jojo. And he learned it from a guy on Reddit, so there's, there's the credit. <laughs> In our camera properties, if we switch from perspective to panoramic, and you can see everything changes quite dramatically. Our lens has changed as well. So let's reset this to be 41. All right, we're back to the correct field of view. And we've got a panoramic type lens, which doesn't really do much once you zoom back in. But what we can do is turn up the ratio. And the more we turn this up, the more of a swirly effect we'll get, as you can see here. And we can take a look at this and take a look at our reference and match those up if you want. I'm guessing it's probably not all the way up to two, maybe like a 1.5 would be matching closest. But yeah, I'd say that starts to match pretty closely here. Okay, so this is method one. If we want to get results that will be a little bit more accurate, if you actually look in the center of this, it's swirly in the center as well. And it's kind of hard to tell because in the video, our subject is right in the middle. But with our Helios lens in the center, the bokeh is not swirly. It's just usually around the sides. So this isn't completely accurate, although it gets pretty close. 
and this is actually the technique I used in the movie. Okay, so let's get a little bit more accurate. I'm going to switch back to perspective, and now what I'm going to do is share a technique that has been perfected by Gleb Alexandrov. With the camera selected, let's just make sure the origin point is on the camera. So I'm going to go Shift S and cursor to selected. That lines up better. And let's go Shift A, add in a plane. And then I'm going to Shift select the camera. And with Control C, I'm going to use copy rotation. And if you don't see this copy rotation setting, that means you need to enable the copy attributes add-on. And you can find that in the user preferences. But now with this plane selected, what we can do is go into edit mode on the plane and grab that. If we double tap Z, that'll move it on the local Z axis right along with the camera. And let's just put it here for now. Then back in object mode with the plane selected, I'm shift selecting the camera and going control P and object. And now if we rotate the camera around, our plane will stay right in front of it. Cool. And now let's grab a new material and I'm going to switch to a transparent shader. Let's drop one of those in. And viewing this, I'm going to add in a texture that once again, Gleb Alexandrov provided. So I'll make sure to drop a link in the description for that. Okay, so with this guy, I'm gonna plug it right into the color. And if we take a look here in rendered view, you can see it's just like a cutout hole. And so I'm gonna modify that a little bit. Let's select the texture and go control T. That adds in some mapping nodes. And I'm gonna to switch to object, drop that into the vector instead of UV. And you can see we've got something a little bit off-centered here. Let's switch from repeat to clip. And then let's go into the location. Just add 0.5 to both of those. And now it's in the center. And this is actually pretty cool. I should probably be using the other viewport because this is where we see the renderedness. You can see around the sides, we're already starting to get this kind of swirly bokeh effect. But it's not perfect. There's obviously a lot of the black part that's kind of interrupting here a little bit. So if we go down to the scale setting here, we can adjust all of these to change the scale. And if we want to simplify this, let's just go input and value, plug that into the scale. Then we have one value that we can use to change the size. Cool. If we make it really small, you can just see we just get this tiny little, tiny little circle here. All right, so this is a really cool effect and it is pretty much what we want, but let's just make some adjustments. You can see our background has actually kind of come more into focus because of this object here. And so we probably want to adjust our f-stop value again in the camera settings. And this is where things get really fiddly because you're going right back and forth between the plane material and the camera material. So if you want to select the plane material, we can actually check this pin and that will stay there no matter what object you've selected. So we can mess with the value and there's another thing that I'd like to add in here, which is if we go to Converter and add in a color ramp, we can actually kind of adjust how much of this craziness is in the center of the frame and how much of it isn't. If we do want that, then what we can do is actually adjust the value to be greater than one of the white, and that will just make the frame brighter, but still keep the nice juiciness. So we could just call this a day here if we've got everything adjusted the way we want it, but something that I was just playing around with and is really cool to help things be a little bit more streamlined is drivers. So in the camera settings here, if you go down to custom properties, we can just add in a new one. And I'm just going to go to the little gear icon and call this maybe distance. And I'm just gonna use this to adjust how far away the plane is from the camera right from the camera settings. So with the camera selected, we can go down to the distance property and I'm gonna right click this and I'm going to copy as new driver. And with that copied, I'm going into our 3D view here and into the scale of the plane. And since our origin is right where the camera's origin is, if we scale this up and down, it'll change the distance from the camera, which is pretty nice. So in the scale, we can just go right click and paste driver I'm just going to do this for all three of these values. And now if we go into the camera properties, you can see we've got this custom property at the bottom where we can change the distance of the plane to the camera, which if we look in the rendered view actually does have a pretty huge effect. We could just change this down. Things get crazier. Nice. That's actually really beautiful. I like the way that's working. And you'll notice as we bring it closer like this, 
our texture might be getting a little bit too small. So if we want to have even more fine control, we can add in another custom property. So I'm gonna go new, and let's just set this to something like texture scale. And I'm gonna go okay there. Right click on this value once again, and copy as new driver. And I'm going to go over to our texture value here and paste as new driver. There we go. And now from our camera properties, we can scale this up or down as much as we want. That way we don't need to have this material pinned all the time and we don't even need to go into the material settings. We can just adjust our plane right from the camera properties. So we've got the distance to the camera, which kind of brings things into focus a little bit more. And we've also got the texture scale, which will make sure we don't get that black fringing all around. Now I'm actually kind of liking the look of it closer to the camera and a little bit bigger so that the black fringe isn't too close. Okay, this is pretty cool. Um, you'll notice I accidentally left the ratio at 1.5, so let's switch this back to one and see if that affects it any better. Cool. So we can see in the center, everything is circular. And then towards the side, we definitely have something a lot more swirly. Now this should probably be dialed in quite a bit more if we want to exactly match the lens, but that is a process I will leave to you. If you found this useful and you'd like to see more tutorials like it, there's a link in the description where you can find weekly email updates on tutorials, as well as a pack of free smoke elements, which can be super handy when you're working in visual effects. These things are seamless and looping, and you can just drop them into your blender scene and have instant atmosphere. All right, that's all for now.